One of my next guests says that these recent IPOs are overpriced and luring in younger, less savvy investors. Joining me now, Dan Genter is president of RNC Genter Capital Management and Margie Patel is senior portfolio manager at Wells Fargo Asset Management. Uh, Dan, I'm referring to your comments there. Why are you, uh, what is your thinking about DoorDash yesterday, Airbnb today, and what's really going on here? Well, Clay, I think what you have is you have a, a very narrow market that's moved has been primarily a big tailwind for a large cap growth and especially for the tech and the nouveau tech. And you have a new generation of investors out there. I mean, it's people that, that are making money. They have cash. They have 401k plans. They're putting money in. And it's a younger generation that's very, very familiar with these companies. They're using their products. And, and to some degree, it's an old school investing, if you will, which is, you know, buy companies that you know, buy companies that you like and that you enjoy and know their product. So they're following that, you know, old trend, if you will. But this generation, for the most part, really doesn't have the capability or the analytical knowledge to really analyze these from a financial standpoint. So they're making decisions based on products and popularity of products, and which is good, but then they don't have really any sense of valuation. And so the, the valuations are becoming somewhat astronomical and I think where you're going to see a pop in the bubble, if there is a pop in the bubble, because sometimes momentum continues for a while, is going to be professional investors mm -hmm. like uh, myself and others that are going to look at this and say, you know, we really can't justify these stratospheric uh, evaluations. And if we're not going to come out entirely, we're certainly going to take some money off the table and pull it back to a, you know, a two or three percent normal position size. You know, we don't want to have a six, seven, eight percent position in these companies you know, at, at valuations that, you know, they'd have to grow at, at 40, 50 percent a year on a peg ratio basis to sustain. Right. 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 No, and, and that and we're showing the performance of the Renaissance IPO ETF. We just showed th uh, C3 AI. That was yesterday's monster IPO. It's up another 30 percent today. Margie, I know you think this is not so much um, exuberance or, you know, investors being suckered, but a high risk appetite in the market and the relative scarcity of IPOs overall. Is that right? Yes, there haven't been that many IPOs this year. And certainly when you have an IPO that has a, a catchy part of the tech market, people remember all the tech uh, new issues that came over the last decade, how much money they made, and people want to jump in. So I don't think they look at this as a as traditionally as a price earnings ratio, the revenue growth. They look at it as a scarcity value. And so they really don't put a price on it that a so-called rational investor might be. It's just the way it is with these types of deals. Margie, that said, if you combine IPO funds raised with SPAC funds raised this year, I think we're at about $130 billion, like the most since uh, the, the late 90s. I mean, that is a, a huge sum of money. It doesn't suggest that there's a dearth of opportunities. Well, there's a lot of money to be invested in good investment ideas, but uh, really, I think the cash is much greater. And we've seen over the years, even this year, that companies are awash in cash. They're using that cash to make acquisitions of other companies, taking advantage of volatility in the stock market. And so I would say that really it is a, definitely a seller's market and there is a scarcity of companies to buy. And in fact, the number of public companies has actually been shrinking every year, showing you that there's a huge appetite to put money in to buy things or to bring public new companies and not that many suitable opportunities. So when you have these kinds of deals, you have this explosion in prices because there's all this uh, hidden demand that didn't know they wanted to buy this until it came to the marketplace. Well, and certainly they're looking maybe to take gains in some of the parts of the market that yeah. have been such uh, strong performers and maybe find somewhere else to park it. Guys, we have to leave it there for now, but thank you both for your thoughts on today's market environment. Margie Patel and Dan Genter joining me uh, with the Dow down about 30 points right now. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.